everyone, it's July 7th, which is a Friday. Now in two days, I will be a guest at the farmer's market that I was at last year. The other vendor who normally brings some sort of cut bouquets called out. So the market manager asked me if I had flowers and I was like, yes, I do. In fact, I have a lot of lilies. Now the caveat is that it is going to thunder supposedly. Now we've we were supposed to get thunder for the last like three weeks and every single day it's like is it gonna thunder is it gonna rain sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't now right now it's a hundred percent on the weather app which in the past two weeks has not always come to fruition so i'm holding my breath basically waiting to see what happens on sunday but what this means is that if we do get thundered out i'm gonna have to push these bouquets through another route but the lilies are not doing as well as I had hoped through the pre-orders at my co-op. So I think that this is the best route right now to hope that I'm going to have a market sell at that market. If And if not, then I'll go to a plan B, which is on Facebook Marketplace. I had to just wipe my face because my glasses were falling. We just finished working out. Someone said my glasses were too big and I said it's actually because I have a low nose bridge since I'm Asian. It's really hard for me to find glasses as a whole and I don't like those rubber stoppers because it really irritates my skin. So I'm trying to, I guess, not lift up my glasses on the video in case if it bothers people. Anyway, so let me show you what I have in the field. I have a lot despite ripping stuff out because of the thrips issue. Now an update on that right now is I still haven't done the beneficial nematode toad stretch because I still have irrigation from the the pole barn garage uh, we had the irrigation set up my father-in-law accidentally struck a t-post into the water pipe so it's out of commission and I don't want to use uh, what do you call it a watering can I want to use the diffuser that I got so we're coming up on 10 days with the beneficial nematodes in my refrigerator we'll see how that goes but anyway I pulled out the foxglove the snapdragons fever few and there's new foxglove that's coming up this is just um foxglove that has continuously been flowering uh despite the best usable stems being all harvested and there's no thrips on there so i'm really happy with that the lilies so far have been thripless even the rubecchia on the patch over there uh i deadheaded a lot i got rid of the ones that i saw with thrips i'm not seeing thrips so i felt like that was a really good thing that i did but let me show you what i have for this market and what i plan to harvest eric's here i decided to bring him along and be the man behind the camera so you can actually see me as i'm talking about the flowers I'm gonna keep this simple. I want to use as few flowers as possible to make it feel full just because of the potential to get rained out. But here's bee balm. So I'm gonna be harvesting from this. Unfortunately, some of the bee balm is already gone. So I would say that bees are unusable, but I can use the seed from here. That's definitely unusable. But this section over here looks really, really good. So come on over. I also have amaranth, which I am surprised at how fast it grew. You can see there's some holes here from the Japanese beetles, but still totally usable. Now this was self-seeded. It did not self-seed in this organized format. I transplanted it from over here where it's self-seeded. This is my little dahlia experimental patch. I'm growing dahlias in pots. So I have a lot of amaranth. They self-seeded. I didn't get a chance to transplant them. So I'm gonna be using these for filler in the bouquets. Both of these rows are going to be used. I'm not gonna get as many sunflowers out of this succession for the market, which is fine, but we've got a lot of yarrow. So I've already gotten so much out of this yarrow patch, but I'm going to harvest all of it and it will be good for me to trim all the way down because yarrow already grows very aggressively and I don't want it to self-seed and grow even more aggressively. This is probably my best performing Rubecchia. It's a Sahara. This overwintered from last year, so I didn't get a lot of cuttings out of this. I decided to leave it in and it's done really well. There hasn't really been a lot of aphid pressure on this and I haven't seen thrips yet. So cross my fingers. There's unfortunately thrips as I was saying over there, but this patch is fine, so I'll be able to use it. And then if we turn around to that side, we've got even more Rubecchia, some of which cosmetically has been damaged by the beetles, but there's still quite a few salvageable petals so or stems. 
So I'm gonna use those and that's pretty much it. We've got Yarrow, Rebecca, the Bee Balm, Amaranth. There's actually some Sea Holly, but the focal is going to be the lilies. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about harvesting them. People have been asking me for a lily video. I'm still trying to nail down some things, but I think there's the harvesting piece that I can share and I'll show you my refrigerator, which is full of lilies right now. And those will be the main star of each bouquet. Hey guys, so I wanna talk about best age to harvest tulips. So I've got a bunch, of, not tulips, lilies. I've got a bunch of lilies growing in crates over here. They've been growing outside. These were planted in April. And so they, some of them are actually ready to be harvested. Now, what I've learned is that depending on what you're looking for in terms of when to sell will dictate when you want to harvest. Now, a lot of people will actually harvest at this stage once the buds start showing color. This is actually a fantastic stage that I've learned for storing these in the cooler because the buds right now are still relatively robust. They're not going to be super fragile and they will hold in the cooler for quite a bit. I've had buds at this stage in the fridge for about two weeks and they still look great. They're just slowly getting to maturity. Now, let's say you have a market coming up in a couple of days or you're selling to a florist who wants the lilies to be open for event work in a few days. I would actually wait until the bud looks like this, if not even a little bit further. You can see over here that the bud is not as tight. It's just starting to lift. I am going to harvest this soon, basically today. Um, and this will actually open up wonderfully for my market. And the reason why you want to harvest at this stage for the market is because they will actually start to open up. Now, the con with harvesting at this stage is that these become very fragile. It actually is really hard, in my view, to store them in the refrigerator, especially if you have a lot of stems because they're going to start crashing into each other. They might bruise. I've had some heads fall off. So it almost feels like you're playing Tetris inside the refrigerator. But these, I've started to learn, I need these for... Wednesday or for for Sunday which is two days away I can actually hold this in my basement which is around 67 degrees and they will slowly open up versus being beat down in the sun and opening up more quickly here is my trusty old fridge with the lilies so we've got some in here that are pretty much on the cusp of blooming like this one, you can see this one got a little burnt, of course. This one's on the cusp of blooming. But I'm holding a lot of these in here for the market on Wednesday. So next Wednesday. And I have some over here. So I'm just going to bring these guys out because some of the stems are a little bit shorter, which is good for market bouquets. And then I don't want to have all of the inventory in there out because it is quite hot outside as I make the bouquets. And so we're just going to see how many lilies I get through, how many... I'm going to need from the fridge and I'll go from there. So I'm going to bring all of this stuff into the garage and we'll take it from there. I don't see a lot of videos out there talking about bee balm or this is Lambada. It's a type of Bernarda. So I want to talk about this because I didn't get to harvesting it quickly enough and I actually don't have as many as I thought. But this is the perfect harvest stage. You want one of the florets to start opening up and then the top is still green. Now, unfortunately, most of mine have already started opening up. So there are two things I wanna talk about with Menarda. You wanna harvest at the stage, and when you harvest, you wanna put it into a sleeve, because I found that it's like Snapdragon, where if you don't put them into a sleeve and keep them straight, they will start drooping. Now, the second thing is that when the heads get a little too mature in terms of the, the flowers, you can actually pick off the flowers and you get this, which makes for a much more robust stem in terms of just holding up in uh, an arrangement and vase life. It gives it very interesting interest and also it makes it more usable. So let me show you what I mean by taking off the purple petals. I saved the stem that is a prime candidate for this method that I'm going to show you. So you can see over here, the leaves are, or not the leaves, the petals are clearly spent. They're, they're drying. So all I do is I just pick out the petals. And for some of them, you are going to have to be a little bit more forceful in taking out the purple petals. But once you do that, it really does transform this into a very different kind of filler. And one that I, there I say even like better than 
uh, when Minarda is at its peak. So I'll even do it up here. And actually what I like about this too is that my Minarda is a really good hiding place for, I think they're flea beetles. So this process also allows me to scuttle those beetles out of their little resting area. And so that way when customers are bringing these home, they have a less likelihood of having pests in their arrangement. So here we go. Look at that. I normally am not a procrastinator, but for whatever reason, I procrastinated making bouquets today, partially because it is so hot outside and second because I don't know if I'm gonna get rained out. So all this to say, I'm not planning on bringing the full extent of what I could make to the market. I'm just probably gonna try to bring about a dozen or a little bit more bouquets. So, and I wanna make it easy too. I'm just gonna preface all this because I did not go foraging for greenery and all that stuff. I think I have enough filler and I just want these to be simple. So let me show you what I have to work with in the buckets. I've got yarrow that I've harvested, a lot less Rebecca than I had anticipated. Amaranth, lilies, bee balm. Looking at this, definitely not a dozen bouquets. So I'll go out and harvest as needed. I also honestly just didn't have it within me to go wake up early this morning and go harvest. I haven't gotten great sleep in the last couple of days. So I'm just gonna see what I whip up. And look, if I have to bring straight bunches of lilies, then so be it. So let's get started. I just went to go get some more lilies from the refrigerator. Uh, I am running out and I made seven bouquets so far, but I wanted to show you why I love lilies, other than the fact that they're gorgeous on their own. But let me put these back. So I showed you earlier in a video that one of my lilies had kind of like froze, gotten some freeze damage. So, oops, sorry. This is that lily can see this part over here is just too damaged. So all I have to do is just snip that off. And I'm gonna snip off the entire thing because this green one here is too small, it's not gonna open. So snip, oops. And now this will definitely open, this will definitely open. This should open, these two are a little bit questionable, but you know, make the bouquet look a little bit fuller. So still a usable stem.
So believe it or not, my phone overheated outside, which is why I had to stop. But these have been inside for a couple of hours and I just want to take a video because some of these are going to start opening up tomorrow. Like this guy's already opening up. So I just want to show you the difference. I'm going to keep them here at, this is what? This is actually 70 degrees down here, which is fine because I want lilies like this to start popping open for the market. And then tomorrow morning, you're going to see the progress that these have made over time. So I did actually get 12 bouquets out of this. And then I'm going to do some very small bunches because I still have quite a bit of yarrow left. But I'm pretty happy with what this turned out to be for the amount of stems that I had and the amount of time it took. It literally took me less than 20 minutes to make this and about 40 minutes to set up and tear down. So pretty good on the time part. So I have a problem and I know it. I tried to take a nap and I couldn't because all I kept on thinking was 12 bouquets isn't enough. You have plenty of stems out in the field. You have lilies, do something. So that's how I came up with my experiment since I always try to take markets as opportunities for me to learn something so we're going to do price discrimination in the world of marketing price discrimination is basically using price psychology to either get or to nudge people to buy a specific product that you want or to lure in different types of customers at different price points so for example someone buying a ten dollar bouquet is not going to spend thirty dollars on a bouquet and so forth so what did i do i got up from my nap I went outside, I harvested, I got about 20 stems of lilies and I had 10 more in the refrigerator or sorry, not 10 more. I had a total of 18 because I did six bunches and I'm going to sell that for $30 and then I'm going to sell little posies for $10 and my goal is to get people to buy the $20 bouquet. So we're going to see if this works. This is all not going to come to fruition if we don't have enough traffic tomorrow because of the market. but might as well try right so this is the bucket that i harvested it's not a lot and that's fine because ten dollars is not a lot of stems and these are actually shorter stems so they're stems that would not have really been usable anyway so i figured might as well and i have the time right now we're going to a wedding in two hours but i still have some time to putz around and let's see what i can do so this is morning of the market i'm just getting ready to load the flowers into the truck and we're going to be off but before i go i want to talk a little bit about my pricing strategy so clearly it is not raining right now it might start thundering in about two hours after the market starts which honestly is good because it starts getting really slow in the later stages of the market anyway but let's talk about pricing so i'm going to have three price points these are the mixed bouquets they are going to be twenty dollars each i have some minis these are $10. They're very bright and cheery. And then these are straight stems of lilies, which are actually going to be $30. There's six of them in there. So we're valuing each stem at about $5, which is a really reasonable retail price. Now, let's talk about this concept of price discrimination, which I'm going to talk more in detail after the market wraps up. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push these bouquets. And what I'm doing is I'm also gonna do a two for $30 deal because honestly, if today's traffic is gonna be bad because people think it's gonna rain or the market is gonna close earlier and I'm gonna have less traffic because of that, I wanna push these bouquets out since if I am stuck with them, I probably need to do a sale on Facebook Marketplace anyway. So I'd rather push them out earlier than later. But by having a $30 option, I'm hoping that this $20 option feels really good. And so then the two for $30 at $15 each feels like a steal. I have a feeling the posies are gonna go pretty quickly because they're so cheery and they're only $10. And that's totally fine because they took literally no time to make. And there were honestly unusable stems because they were so short. So this is what I'm bringing to market, 12 mixed bouquets, three $30 straight stems of lilies. And what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, $10 posies. And Chance, you are unfortunately unable to come with us. Chance, hi, wave hi. Pa?
it's 12.30 and I think the storm is coming in and we only have about 30 minutes left. I have four bouquets left and two straight lily bunches. All the minis sold out. I'll tell you all the details, but at a certain point, I wasn't sure if I was gonna sell anything today. So I'm pretty happy with where I ended up so far. Despite that rain, I'm down to one market bouquet, which actually needs to go to a CSA customer, so win! I am now back from the market, dry, took a shower, eight and am ready to talk about numbers, but also this price discrimination experiment that I tried and that I find fascinating because of certain other things that happened. But first numbers. I made $260 in revenue. Now, there was something funky going on with my phone. I was honestly also running out of storage space, so I didn't get to record as I normally do during the market. First 40 minutes, completely dead for me. Traffic was actually pretty good in my view because it was Blueberry Festival. I did talk to the market manager. She thought it was a little bit slow, but I thought it was pretty good. And you can see in that setup video, they put me in the beginning parts of the market. So I have complete access to looking at the parking lot area and it felt like traffic was there. Now, just to give you a frame of reference, we're talking about maybe like two dozen vendors. We're talking about a few thousand people who are walking into the market this time of year. If I had a guess, maybe like four or 5,000 people. So it's not small, but it's also not huge and big. So $260, normally I would not be thrilled with, but I am very happy with today. And that is actually the exact amount that I made at the last market. And this $260, when I look at it from a profitability perspective, breaks down pretty closely to my profitability last time, which comes out to about $91. So $91, again, is not going to do much for me significantly financially, but it is $260 of cash flow. That is nice to have this time of year, especially as I am prepaying for bulbs that are coming in for the fall for my tulip bulbs. Um, I bought a lot of them from the tulip workshop and they give a discount if you pay earlier in July. So when I think about the cost of my bouquets, the primary cost came from my lilies. Now I bought mixed lilies from Ownings. So they did a Oriental Trumpet Hybrid mix crate. So 250 bulbs for $180, including shipping. That comes out to, we'll call it like roughly 75 cents a bulb with time, labor, all that stuff. Each bouquet comes out to about $5. And a lot of the stems that I used were stems that came from things like Yarrow, where I made more than enough money off of Yarrow to even need to count the cost of those seedlings, not that it was very much for those seedlings. And then things like amaranth, which completely self-seeded. The bee balm was also something that I got for free from my local grower friend. It just took a while for it to take off. And what else did I have? I had some Rebecchia, which probably is the most expensive ingredient in the bouquet because I haven't had a great Rebecchia season due to all of the pests. But I'm valuing each bouquet at $5 from a cost perspective. So from a profitability standpoint, it's it's okay. Now let's start getting into the price discrimination piece of the conversation because something happened at the market that in and of itself also created price discrimination. So when I say price discrimination, there's a lot of different types of price discrimination. I'm doing something called third degrees price discrimination. And price discrimination at the end of the day is offering the same product at different price points to maximize the amount that you can make. And this is off of the concept that one person might be more price sensitive to another person. So I gave that example before about someone who's looking for a $10 bouquet is certainly not gonna pay $30 for a bouquet. And even that $30 paying customer is probably gonna look down upon a $10 bouquet because $10 might connotate bad quality or shorter vase life, that kind of stuff. So I'm prefacing this because we have price discrimination every day in our lives. Think about just offering discount to students, uh, teachers, people who serve in the military. That's a form of price discrimination. Uh, so with the student piece, it's a lot easier to rationalize this because students don't have a lot of money. So it's thought that, well, if I give them a discount, then they'll be more likely to spend here. 
versus not spending at all. And if you do price discrimination correctly, you're capturing people who normally would not spend at a higher tier. So if you do it right, then you are maximizing your revenue and profit because you're getting more buyers than you normally would. Another really easy example is Starbucks. Starbucks has three different sizes. Your same product, right? You're selling coffee. It's just three different sizes and you're getting someone to pay a little bit extra for the same type of coffee. It's just a little bit more volume. That is still considered price discrimination. So my three bouquets, $10, $20, $30. I had to lower my $20 bouquet to a $15 bouquet. And let me tell you, that is a damn steal for that bouquet. That bouquet had at least two lily stems in there, plus all of the other stuff that you saw. So $15 for that bouquet is definitely a steal. First 40 minutes when my bouquets were at $20, nothing was moving. And it was because I had another vendor, literally, I would say it was 100 feet down from me, who was also selling market bouquets, except it was a vegetable vendor. Now, if you sold at a flat, at a farmer's market, you'll know that sometimes during this time of year, veggie farmers will bring their own bouquets and they will significantly underprice them. This vendor was selling their bouquets for, I think it was like seven or $8. Those bouquets are worth, I would say $15. So in the beginning, nothing was moving. And it was because we were near the entrance of the farmer's market. So people were waiting to do all their shopping to come back and pick up bouquets. And her bouquets started flying off the shelf. So I knew right then and there that I had a price issue. And that was a form of price discrimination because we have flowers, albeit hers looked very different. I'll say that hers looked very cheery. They were really colorful. They were great. Mine had that amaranth. It was a little bit more moody, but I also had some, as the market manager called, bougier stems. I had lilies. So it was one of those things where the just the nature of the setup of the market was creating price discrimination. And I knew that if I needed to move anything today, I had to lower that price. Once I lower that market bouquet price down to $15 for just one, instead of needing to buy two to get to that price, they also started flying. And the other thing that really helped me today was I brought a vase with three very fully open lily stems. And that was the best marketing ever because I had people who would just walk into the entrance of the market and just look at the lilies. I mean, a lot of them obviously didn't buy, but it really got people's attention. And for the people who came and wanted to buy flowers, that was a differentiator because they saw that I had lilies. They were interested in how big those lilies were. And obviously that $8 bouquet did not have lilies. Those $8 bouquets, I was watching people walk by, snapdragons, zinnias, straw flowers, sunflowers. Some of the sunflowers looked a little bit blown open. So the way I look at it is, She's charging seven, eight dollars for a bouquet that is probably worth that much from a vase life perspective. I would expect those to last for maybe up to a week. And I would expect customers to have my flowers last for around two weeks. I mean, lilies have a really great vase life and you can see that my lilies were picked at a very good stage. And I had some repeat customers from last year who came and bought from me because they know my flowers last. So what I'm trying to say here is Price discrimination, I think, definitely played a role here. I am capturing people who are willing to pay a little bit more for an extra special type of bouquet. I had a couple of men come and buy bouquets for their their wives. I, I asked them, they said, yeah, it's, it's for my wife, it's for my girlfriend. And so my bouquets are wrapped. They just looked more giftable versus something like that $8 bouquet. It's just, it, it's nice to bring home and bring some cheer onto, you, you know, that dining table. And so I talked to the market manager about this. I said, you know, it's at the end of the day, like I can't compete against an $8 bouquet. And she totally understood. She said that it's actually, um, that vendor has been upsetting a lot of other flower vendors. And we all just, we're obviously not gonna price a bouquet under $10 because we can't compete. And that vendor is just looking to make a little bit of extra cash from those flowers. And while it can be frustrating at the end of the day, I'm kind of glad that people are still buying her flowers because it's still a local flower, right? So even though she basically sold out all of hers except for one bunch, I was left with a total of three bouquets of which I had to drop one off for a CSA customer. We both technically kind of sold out. 
So it goes to tell you that there is still a market for different types of customers for different flowers. I am, however, noticing that people are becoming a little bit more conscious about spending money on flowers. Uh, I've always felt that flowers have been somewhat recession proof and I still think they are. It's just the amount of money that people are willing to pay for a bouquet is starting to go down. So for example, I had a couple of people walk by and it's like, wow, like $30 for lilies? And my home like, you betcha it's $30 for that um, because that is gonna open up really nice and big and that is a steal compared to what you would need to pay for at a florist. I also had some people walking around with a baby in like the Artie Pop carrier. I don't know if you're familiar with this. I'm now familiar with it. It is a $370 carrier. Um, you can get a carrier for much less money and it will work just as well. But that there was a woman <laughs> wearing that carrier saying, that's a lot of money for flowers. And in my head, I was like, that's so funny because that's a lot of money for a carrier. So it goes to tell you that even though people have money, discretionary money to spend, their perception is going to change on the perceived value of different products. That woman is probably thinking, I am gonna wear this carrier every day for close to a year. I'm gonna get utility out of it. It is worth me spending $370 and it's a fashion statement and all that stuff, but I'm only gonna get two weeks out of um, a vase of flowers. So I totally get it. That woman is just not my customer and it is not what she places value in that I am looking for in a customer that is going to be loyal to me. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. I think that $15 is the sweet spot in my market if I were to go back. So it just means that I need to make something that feels more reasonable for a $15 bouquet for me, but also feels very lush and full for that farmer market customer. Um, there are some people who I feel can easily get $25 off of a bouquet that I made in their market. And there are some people who can't even get $15 for that, right? Every single market is going to look different. You're going to have to figure out what that sweet spot is for you. But before you go into market, you should really figure out what is the cost of that bouquet that I make and how much am I willing to have the lowest threshold be in terms of profit? So making $10 off of a single bouquet was fine for me because they were stems that, uh, it was hard for me to hold all of them in the refrigerator. And so I had more lilies coming in, so I'm just glad I was able to push them out. So lots of thoughts, lots of, I was kind of excited just seeing how things play out. Sometimes I do these markets not for selling stuff, but more for observing and the business strategy piece of it. That part is really interesting for me. So let me know if you have any questions, if you've observed any type of price discrimination in your markets, if you're thoughtful and intentional, intentional about creating your price points to have that price discrimination and how that has gone for you. And I will see you in the next video.